Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about, well, spinners and other variations of spinners. Not just like your typical little inline spinner, like lots of kinds of spinners. So what we're going to be, like I'm going to cover them all and I'm going to cover where to fish them, when to fish them. And it's just like any other lure actually, I'm going to have to tell you again, I, I say it in like almost every video I talk about lures and that's that the best times to fish them are pre-spawn and a little bit into the during the spawn and then after the spawn. So I wouldn't say post-spawn, like you might want to wait a couple months after April or so because action gets down because fish are tired. So fish are tired because they've been spawning and they've been chasing each other around and they don't really go for prey that moves very much. And so if you have a spinner or a lure or a spoon or a hard bait, anything like that might not do as well. So that's why I recommend either fishing in those times, those, that, those good time periods. So early February, late March, a little bit early April, I'd say. And then after that, I wouldn't for a little bit. I'd stick, I'm not saying don't fish, definitely fish. There are good, good times during post spawn to catch big fish. And it's kind of a good time because you can take advantage of them being slightly tired and you don't have to fight them as hard, especially if they're big and you've got light line on like an ultralight combo setup. But I definitely consider fishing during the post spawn right after when they're all tired and they're all going for things that don't move as much worms. Worms is the best bait to use during that time. I can't even express how much worms you, it doesn't even matter what you put above the worm. I was testing yesterday, a really cool little idea that I had. I was like, okay, so I go to Schofield. This is in Utah. I go to Schofield Reservoir and I go to Strawberry Reservoir and I've been to various spots. As it doesn't matter what what type of time of year I'm fishing in ice, ice fishing, you know, and I'm also doing um, boat fishing on those places since those it's like the easiest way to fish that bigger places where it's deeper is because they like to stay when it's deeper. It doesn't in a pond like a local pond, the trout are like, okay, it's nice outside, I'm gonna go up here, but in a lake, it's like we're used to being deep underwater, not that deep, but deep. Like they're they're not easy to find, especially when you're ice fishing and you can't even see in the water. Um, spinners are great, not necessarily for cast and retrieve all the time. There are spinners that are, that I would use for cast and retrieve. And then there's spinners that I wouldn't, and there's specific brands. And it's not that they're bad. It's that they're made specifically for something, right? So we have a Panther Martin, right? And these Panther Martins vary in size. I'm going to get it out for you guys. Um, this guy here, gold black, size four, one of my favorites. Caught a five pound trout out of a little 12 inch trout pond. Measured, he was 24 and a half inches. It was awesome. It was a great experience to catch that fish with this lure. And I was like, okay, well, this proves this is a good shore fishing lure, right? I've been shore fishing with it. I've caught plenty of trout with it. And I'm like, okay. So I know a lure does work on the shore and then there's spinners that don't work as much. And that's much lighter spinners like MEP spinners and rooster tail spinners. I'll show you guys a couple of these. Here's some rooster tails right there. And there's some MEPs, MEP spinners. MEP spinners are good for carp. They're good for creeks, streams, rivers, all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't say they're necessarily great cast and retrieve reels. Like you can cast them, you can cast them in a river environment where it's not as far or a creek environment where it's not very far, but, but the Panther Martin, you can get that distance. If you're trying to cast 35 feet or more, you're going to want a little Panther Martin. You don't need to get out that much in a pond to catch a trout in a lake. I definitely let it sink a little more and this shouldn't have very much trouble sinking. And then I like to whip it a little bit to get that spinner blade going. And then after it's going, I just real slowly, probably like this one, two, and it's spinning at a constant rate. And sometimes I like to give it a little twitch, give it some of that action. Um, when you give it that action, it picks up the spinner blades and puts different vibrations in the water, which make it almost like an injured fish would be swimming. It'd be like this. 
you know. And so I would like kind of do that and make it go up a little bit. I wouldn't let it sink back down, but I just start reeling slowly and it would just go like that and then start at a constant rate again. And over time you learn the techniques that work. It's like, it's like you're figuring it out on your own. Lots of this is figuring it out on your own. Um, with spoon fishing, it's figuring it out on your own. When you're using cast master, when I first started, I was reeling too fast and I started picking up and on that. And I was like, okay, we'll try reeling slow soon enough. I'm catching them on the big cast master. And I'm like, this is awesome. This I'm catching like probably 18 in a couple hours. And I'm like, this works. This is awesome. This is during pre-spawn and post, or not post-spawn, but during spawn. So not after. This was like early February and March when I was doing the cast master like that. And it's awesome. It's great to use cast masters, but I do like using these spinners as well, because like I said, I can land monsters. You can land monsters. Anyone can land a monster with a spinner. What I like to do is cast it into my pond. It's not that deep. Let it sink for maybe three seconds. Start, give it a little whippy because it's a little Panther Martin and these spinners are a little heavier. They take a little more encouragement to start. And so you give it a little whip and then you start reeling just like normal, just like normal. And soon enough, you'll get a bite. It shouldn't take, I mean, it might take, it might take a long time. The best way to use any kind of spinner is definitely in a creek, river, or stream environment. So if you are casting and retrieving, you're not going to have as great luck as if you're using these inside of a stream it doesn't even matter what brand it is creeks and streams that's what spinners are made for so it doesn't matter if it's a rooster tail like this who are really light and you can't cast them too far these are great for a creek and streams and you've got the blue fox super vibrax right here and this thing you can cast it probably almost as far as a panther martin since they've got this big weight at the front um, but then again, these spinners are different and they require a little more fast reeling because the spinners don't spin as fast, right? These blades are hanging and they're not like really, really just like a little boat turbine in the water. These are more like sh shimmers in the water that you're going to be sending. You're going to be sending messages to the fish, like visible messages. And then the vibrations are going to be sending, um, feel vibrations because they can't exactly feel, but they are here. I mean, they can't hear, but they have lateral lines on their sides and those lines that they have, they pick up vibrations in the water. So if something big's coming, the fish will see the feel of those little on those little, um, lateral line and they'll swim off. Like if you were to step into the water full of bluegill, they might not be able to see you, but they'll, they'll feel you and hear you through the lateral line and they'll get there, they'll get out of there um lateral line is something that fish use to find prey and to avoid predators and so if you have something small vibrating in the water they'll be like prey item and they'll go over to it if you make something look injured they'll go over to it because they're like okay it's an injured bait fish i'm gonna go eat it and then there's all kinds of spinners you can use but i <laughs> I stock up on my Panther Martins. They are pretty expensive and it might take a while to earn money to get them, but I think it's worth it. I think Panther Martins are worth it because they're honestly probably my favorite spinner. If you, if I were to pick between two of my favorite spinners, which is the Rooster Tails and the Panther Martins, I'd probably pick the Panther Martin because it's more versatile. You can cast it and you can use it in a creek river or stream just fine. In fact, probably even better than some rooster tails. And so honestly, if it were a competition catching fish, I definitely, I definitely bet on this right here. Um, as far as colors go, um, for the Panther Martin, I picked the black gold with the size four, um, size four. You should see it on the spinner. You should see it on the packaging. It'll have a little four. And if the gold spoon isn't working, you can do the same black, gold, and silver. And if that's not working, then I'd get... This is like the three basic Panther Martins I'd purchase. Like these are the three basic Panther Martins I own. And then I'd have yellow, red with the silver. And also size four. Size four is my basic size for trout. I don't want it too big, but there is an occasion where I do have this one. And this is a size six. It's not much bigger, but it is much heavier. It doesn't have that little tiny leaden thing in the middle. It's got a big weight here. And so you're throwing that and it goes way farther and it has, you can feel it on your pole. You can feel it when you're reeling at the spin, the blade spinning. It 
you can feel it. And it's way easier to detect bites on spinners or all lures actually, because when you're making a lure go, when something suddenly stops that lure from going, you're going to feel it. So it's not like a bait and like a, a float rig where you're worried that you won't feel the fish or all that kind of stuff. Or people are like, how do I know if I can feel it? You'll know if you feel it. <laughs> You'll know if you feel it with a spoon. You'll know if you feel it with a, any kind of lure. And I'll do a tutorial or kind of like an intro to spoons. I mean, I did spoons. I'm going to do one to hard bait because I am really, really interested and still um, wondering and experimenting and all that kind of stuff with those. So definitely have a video out soon about that. Um, best time to fish a spinner before dawn, before dusk, and then just times that I feel like sometimes the times that I would eat, the fish will eat. And so you know, sundown, it's almost dinner time, supper time, it's supper time for them too. All the little bugs are coming out and they're flying and sometimes they fall into the lakes and the trout come up and that's why, that's why they're starting to jump really, really crazy. If you've ever stayed at a lake for long enough that, or got, gotten late enough that, or early enough, early and late because all the bugs out, all the mosquitoes, all the mayflies, all that kind of stuff, they're all still out flying around and getting stuck and fish are jumping up and grabbing them. It's awesome to watch sometimes because you can see big fish jump out of the water. I'm like, okay, let's cast over there. <laughs> um, spinners, okay? Spinners are sometimes one of the best go-to baits. If I can recommend anything in your tackle box, I'd recommend some Panther Martins. I'd recommend um, two different types of Rapalas, which are some hard bait lures, which I will um, definitely make a video about. So stay tuned for that. And then I definitely bring Cast Masters, um, one of my all-time favorite spoons. Remember, with all of these lures, especially spoons, especially spinners, you want to cast it. And when you cast it, make sure that your rod tip, the little tip there, is aiming right at where the lure is at all times so that it has even action. And um, the action is the same. It's consistent. That's good. And that's important because... Fish know when things are fishy, after all. Um, again, um, I'm going to remind you guys, I, I learned this I learned this the hard way. It took me probably seven years of fishing to learn, and that's that the best times to fish for trout in any probably kind of situation, most likely any situation, would be early February on the nicest day that you can find, all, all those nice days, and then March all February and March, some of the best times you can use a cast master, um, which you can find a lot about in my spoon video. And then um, Panther Martins, which you can also find a lot about, <laughs> and you've probably found a lot about in this video. So guys, if this helped you, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if there's anybody you know who's getting into fishing, share this video with them. Share this on Facebook. I'm trying to get some subscribers. I'm trying to um, rack those numbers up because I'm trying to get into this, you know? I'm trying to put myself out there. And uh, hopefully over time, I'll just get better and better and better. And my videos will get better and better. Um, if I can actually start making money, which I think the... Um, the, uh, the limit or whatever, like you have to have 4,000 total hours watched and then like 100 subscribers to get into the monetization or whatever. So with that said, guys, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you guys next time.